the 1st of September, 1939. After a false accusation that the Poles attacked a German radio station, Nazi Germany launches a retaliatory campaign against Poland, triggering World War II. Poland finds itself fighting a two-front war when it's invaded by the Soviet Union from the east on the 17th of September. Warsaw officially surrenders to the Germans on the 28th of September, and one day later, in accordance with a secret protocol to their non-aggression pact, Germany and the Soviet Union partition Poland. They divide Poland into thirds, the western third annexed to Germany, the eastern third annexed to the Soviet Union, and the middle third turned into a semi-independent administrative unit called the General Government, which is run by German authorities and divided into four districts, one of them being the Warsaw District. Its governor becomes Ludwig Fischer. Ludwig Fischer, a son of Catholic parents, was born on the 16th of April 1905 in Kaiserslautern, then part of the German Empire. After attending elementary school and high school in his hometown, Fischer studied law and political science at several German universities. In May 1926, while he was still a student, he joined the Nazi party. Three years later, in 1929, he received a doctorate from the University of Erlangen. The title of his dissertation was The Failure to Report a Crime. The same year he joined the SA, which was a paramilitary organization associated with the Nazi party, also known as the Stormtroopers and the Brown Shirts for the color of their uniform. From 1928 to 1932, Ludwig Fischer, fluent in English and French, gained court practice in Kaiserslautern and worked as a lawyer in Munich. After Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party came into power in January 1933, Ludwig Fischer joined the newly founded Academy for German Law in Munich. Its president became Hans Frank, and the chairman of its criminal law committee became Roland Freisler, a fanatical Nazi judge who would later become a president of the notorious People's Court, infamous for its show trials, which condemned thousands of Germans to death, often on the barest evidence. The Academy for German Law was charged with promoting reform of German legal life by working in liaison with legislative bodies to implement the National Socialist Program in the fields of law and economics. At the Academy, Fischer held a position as Chief Service Officer. In 1937, he was elected as a member of the Reichstag, Parliament of Nazi Germany. The Second World War began on the 1st of September 1939 with the invasion of Poland. To justify the action, Nazi propagandists accused Poland of persecuting ethnic Germans who were living in Poland. They also falsely claimed that Poland was planning, with its allies Great Britain and France, to encircle and dismember Germany. After the SS, in collusion with the German military, staged a phony attack on a German radio station, the Germans accused the Poles. Hitler then used the action to launch a retaliatory campaign against Poland. Warsaw suffered heavy air attacks and artillery bombardment, and German troops entered the capital on the 29th of September, shortly after its surrender. After defeating the Polish army, the Germans ruthlessly suppressed the Poles, whom they considered to be racially inferior, and in the weeks following the German attack on Poland, German SS, police, and military units shot thousands of Polish civilians, including many members of the Polish nobility, clergy, and intelligentsia. Poland was split into three parts. The Western Third was annexed to the Third Reich, the Eastern Third was occupied by the Soviet Union, and the Central Third was made into a general government, a semi-independent unit which the Nazis intended to use as a place to do all their racial dirty work. The general government was to serve as an endless supply of slave labor, and ultimately as a site for the mass extermination of European Jewry. The general government was divided into four districts, Krakow, Warsaw, Radom and Lublin, with Krakow serving as the administrative center. On the 24th of October 1939, Ludwig Fischer became the chief administrator and in April 1941, governor of the Warsaw district. These areas, which had a total population of 12 million, of which 1.5 million were Jews, were further divided into sub-districts. After the Germans attacked the Soviet Union in the summer of 1941, they attached the Eastern Galicia to the general government, making it the fifth district and adding between three and four million people to the population. The head of the general government was Hans Frank, who held the position of governor general. 
However, he was not free to govern as he pleased as the racial policies carried out in the general government were the responsibility of the SS and the police. The Nazis treated the Poles of the general government in a terrible fashion. They viewed them as a cheap labor source to be taken advantage of at any occasion. Later, the Germans tried to deal with the Poles by distinguishing between those who were of German origin and those who were deemed as inferior. The Germans tried to make sure that the Poles would obey them by terrorizing the population. If the Polish underground killed a German, 50 to 100 Poles were executed as a punishment and warning. The Poles were made to turn over food to the Germans and were forbidden to trade foodstuffs. Thus, those Poles living in urban areas were limited to the pitiful food rations provided, a veritable starvation diet, and were forced to smuggle food illegally just to stay alive. The Jews of the general government were subject to terribly harsh decrees. From the very beginning, the Germans confiscated their property and made them perform forced labor. From late 1939, the Jews were put into ghettos, where they were totally isolated from the outside world and severely restricted. In his position as the governor of the Warsaw district, Ludwig Fischer oversaw the establishment of the Warsaw Ghetto. German authorities had decreed the establishment of a ghetto in Warsaw on the 12th of October 1940. The decree required all Jewish residents of Warsaw to move into the designated area, which German authorities sealed off from the rest of the city in November 1940. In December of the same year, Fischer called for the death penalty for Jews who had left the ghetto without permission. The ghetto, which became the largest of all the Jewish ghettos in Nazi-occupied Europe during World War II, was encircled by a wall that was over 10 feet high, topped with barbed wire, and closely guarded to prevent movement between the ghetto and the rest of Warsaw. The population of the ghetto, increased by Jews compelled to move in from nearby towns, was estimated to be over 400,000 Jews. German authorities forced ghetto residents to live in an area of 1.3 square miles, with an average of 7.2 persons per room. Extreme overcrowding, minimal rations, and unsanitary conditions led to disease, starvation, and the death of thousands of Jews each month. An average daily food ration in 1941 for Jews in Warsaw was limited to 184 calories, compared to 2,613 calories for the Germans. An official German order stated that the basic provisioning of the Jewish residential district must be less than the minimum necessary for preserving life, regardless of the consequences. The hunger in the ghetto was so great that dying people were laying in the streets and small children were seen begging. Between 1940 and mid-1942, 83,000 Jews died of starvation and disease. Widespread smuggling of food and medicines into the ghetto supplemented the miserable official allotments and kept the death rate from increasing still further. Ludwig Fischer oversaw the establishment of other ghettos in his district as well. He also organized terror actions against both Jews and Poles in the Warsaw district and was responsible for mass executions, slave labor pogroms, and the deportation of Poles and Polish Jews to the various German concentration camps. During his stay in Poland, Ludwig Fischer, married with two daughters, lived in a requisitioned villa in the posh Warsaw suburb of Konstantin. He maintained private contacts with Governor General Hans Frank, and the wives of both men often traveled together to the ghettos to take advantage of German terror to procure jewelry, furs, and other valuables. From the 10th of April to the end of May 1943, Fischer was acting as governor in the Lublin district. On the 19th of April, 1943, the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising began, after the German troops and police entered the ghetto to deport its surviving inhabitants to the forced labor camps in Lublin district. The ghetto inhabitants offered organized resistance in the first days of the operation, inflicting casualties on the well-armed and well-equipped SS and police units. They continued to resist deportation as individuals or in small groups for four weeks. It was the largest uprising by Jews during World War II, and the first significant urban revolt against the German occupation in Europe. In the end, however, the Germans raised the ghetto to the ground. They burned and demolished this part of Warsaw, block by block, in order to smoke out their prey. The Germans ended the operation on the 16th of May, when Jürgen Strupp, who led the suppression of the uprising, announced in his daily report to Berlin that the former Jewish quarter in Warsaw is no more. Fischer 
was in his position responsible for the brutal suppression of this uprising, and his name appeared first on the list of operation heads, the serial assassinations of Nazi personnel by the Polish resistance. Those targeted for assassination had been sentenced to death by the Polish underground special courts for crimes against Polish citizens during the World War II German occupation of Poland. In January 1944, his car was shot at, but Fischer managed to escape. The Warsaw Uprising began on the 1st of August 1944, when the Polish Home Army, a non-communist underground resistance army with units stationed throughout German-occupied Poland, rose against the German occupation authorities in an effort to liberate Warsaw. On the 9th of August, during the evacuation from the Brühl Palace, Fischer came under fire from the insurgents and was wounded. Among those killed was his deputy, Herbert Hummel. The impetus for the uprising was the appearance of the Soviet forces along the east bank of the Vistula River. The Soviets, however, failed to intervene, and the Germans eventually crushed the revolt and raised the center of the city to the ground in October 1944. Though they treated captured Home Army combatants as prisoners of war, the Germans sent thousands of captured Polish civilians to concentration camps in the Reich. 166,000 people lost their lives in the uprising, including perhaps as many as 17,000 Polish Jews, who had either fought with the Polish Home Army or had been discovered in hiding. After the suppression of the uprising, Ludwig Fischer cooperated with the military administration in destroying and plundering the city. He was also responsible for the poor conditions in the temporary transit camp on the western outskirts of Warsaw in Pruszkow, which the Nazis set up to intern people expelled from the capital. Around 550,000 Warsaw residents and approximately 100,000 more from the outskirts were incarcerated in the camp. The SS and Gestapo segregated the Poles, who were then either deported to forced labor in Germany, sent to Nazi concentration camps, or expelled to more southern locations of German-occupied Poland. Approximately 650,000 Poles passed through the Pruszkow camp in August, September, and October 1944. Approximately 55,000 were sent to concentration camps, including 13,500 to Auschwitz, 12,000 to Ravensbrück, and 8,700 to Mauthausen. In addition, the Germans murdered several Polish Catholic monks and nuns in the camp. Fischer fled Warsaw on the 17th of January, 1945, and went to Bad Neustadt an der Saale, where he was arrested on the 10th of May, 1945, by members of the US Army. In March of the following year, he was extradited to Poland and tried before the Polish Supreme National Tribunal. The trial began on the 17th of December, 1946, and Fischer's co-defendants were three other members of the Nazi authorities of occupied Warsaw, Ludwig Leist, the mayor of the city of Warsaw, Josef Meisinger, commander of Einsatzgruppe 4 in Poland, and commander of the state police in Warsaw district, known as the Butcher of Warsaw, and Max Daumer, acting commander of the Order of Police in Warsaw, responsible for the massacre of Polish civilians in Wawe, which took place on the 27th of December, 1939. During this massacre, 107 of 114 people sentenced to death were killed. The rest managed to survive by simulating their own death. On the 3rd of March, 1947, the Polish Supreme National Tribunal found Ludwig Fischer guilty, deprived him of his civil rights, and sentenced him to death by hanging. He was 41 years old when he was executed on the 8th of March, 1947, in Mokotów prison in Warsaw. Out of the four defendants on trial, the only one who avoided the death sentence was Ludwig Leist. There were no tears shed for Ludwig Fischer. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.